This is one of the Lewis dot structure assignments that you'll be doing. I'm going to go ahead and start on the assignment. I'll be coming back to that other page in a moment. First, go ahead and change this pound sign into your number. I'm going to do number one. You'll notice it then gives me a compound or a polyatomic ion. For this particular one, I have an ion. Down here, it's going to ask us to do the naming. So since this is an ion, I'm going to look it up. SO3 with a negative 2 charge is sulfite. And if I just let it be sulfite, it doesn't change color because it's going to be marked wrong. So I'm going to go ahead and add the word ion to any ions. When I do that, it changes for me. I'm going to go ahead and start looking at things. Take a look at my periodic table, find sulfur. It is in the sixth column, sixth main column, the uh, P4 section. So I've got the S2 and then P4. So I'm six over on those main group elements. It's the 16th column if I include the D block. I go ahead and do the same thing for oxygen. Oxygen is part of the same family as sulfur. So that's a pretty easy six there. How many electrons does your ion provide? So with this, the ion is a negative two. Since it's a negative, that means it's providing electrons. If it were positive, it would be removing electrons. So this one's going to provide me with two. We go ahead and we just state how many of each atom type we've got. So I've got one sulfur and I have three oxygens. The reason that this is happening is because I'd like to do the math, figuring out how many valence electrons I have to work with. You can see that the equation is mostly worked out for me. 1 times 6 is 6, 3 times 6 is an additional 18, and 2 more is, well, 2 more. So right now we have 26 electrons to work with. Now it's time for us to go ahead and draw it. You'll notice the next section talks about formal charges. But up here, we've got this empty spot where we're going to insert our Lewis dot structure. So let's come back and go to Chem Axon's Marvin Beans. It's molecular sketching tool. We're going to go ahead and use this. So I have a sulfur. I have three oxygen. So I'm just going to sort of put those around as equidistant as, as I can. And you'll notice that initially it goes ahead and adds hydrogen to them. Uh, as I've stated in the past, hydrogen goes on kind of like Christmas ornaments. Any spot there's a bare limb, you're going to put one of those hydrogen balls on there. So we're going to go ahead and change that a little bit by going to this gear. And we're going to go ahead and say I'd like to see lone pairs because they are part of what we're doing. In case I've got carbon, I'd like to show the carbon label. And implicit hydrogens, uh, we're going to go ahead and turn that off, which means they're not just going to automatically go on. You'll notice now everything looks a little different. So it's already gone ahead and provided lone pairs as it assumes they will be. Um, this means some bonding should probably have already happened. So we're going to go ahead and click on the single bond tool and start using up some of my 26 electrons. And we're going to go ahead and grab it and move it until it turns green and let go. I've used up two of my 26, so I'm down to 24. I'm now down to 22, and I'm now down to 20. You'll notice that immediately with this drawing tool, it tells me that there's something wrong with the sulfur, otherwise it wouldn't have turned red. So this is a nice indicator for us. Currently, the oxygens appear to only have six valence electrons surrounding them, two from the bond, and then a lone pair and a second lone pair for a grand total of six. If we've been keeping track of, of how this is, has gone, we should be putting an extra lone pair onto each of the oxygens. And so if I wanted to do that with a charged thing, I'm going to come over here and decrease the charge value and click on one of the oxygens. And so you can see that lone pair pops up and I'm going to do it again with this one. And unfortunately they got in the way of the bond. We'll try to take care of that in a moment. But currently we've used two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 
14, 16, and currently we've got 18 on there. Let's go ahead and decrease this one. We're like, hey, look, I've used all 20. The problem is um, we can kind of do a few things without even observing the formal charge, but we're going we're gonna to do the formal charge stuff in a moment. And what we're going to realize is we need to take one of these lone pairs that's on an oxygen. I'm going to change this over, and we're going to make it a double bond here rather than a single bond. And you can see that that adjusted some things. Now we're going to go ahead and try and clean this up a little bit on our own and make everything look a little nicer. Not a guarantee that it will, but we'd like to get some of the bonding out of the way. Now this is going to be my, my formula. This is going to be what it ends up being. You'll see that in a moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the save icon here. I'm gonna notice I've got two options here, structure and image. Click on image. I'm gonna change it to either a PNG or a JPEG. I'm going to make sure everything that I want is here so it's showing the lone pairs. And it's got the carbons, it's got the hydrogens implicitly turned off. And we're going to go ahead and hit download. It's also telling me how big it is. Download, you can see it went off to the side here. You're going to want to try and keep track of that. On the Chromebook it is a little different. So let me head back. I'm going to go in here. And we're going to go ahead and add it. So let's scroll down. And you'll see that the how to add it is actually shown right here, but I'm going to go ahead and do it on the video as well. I've already clicked into this box. I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bigger. So I have got my insert option. And I'm going to go ahead and hit image, image in cell. And then I'm going to browse and upload that particular thing that just got made. Mine went to downloads. And that's it. Now let's go ahead and analyze it. Notice, initially I had all three oxygens set up the same way, where they had the single bond and three lone pairs. The sulfur initially had three bonds, not four, three bonds and one lone pair. Let's scroll down and take a look at this. Were there bonding variants to the external atoms? Yes, we had two variations of oxygen, so we're going to say yes. So notice it's giving me uh, an exception, you know, like, hey, what's happening with that extra? Now notice I've got that listed as the double or triple bonded variant. So we now have three things here. Now we're going to go ahead and count up the bonds initially as they occurred. And so you're going to see me do that in these first two columns. Remember, this came later or would have come later. So initially we had three bonds on the sulfur and only one on each of the oxygens. With the sulfur we had two lone electrons. We had one lone pair but we had two lone electrons. With the oxygens we had three lone pairs or six lone electrons. Now when I do that it fills out my formal charge equation. So six minus the sum of three and two, six minus five is one. Down here, 6 minus the sum of 1 and 6, so 6 minus 7 is negative 1. Now, both of those are numbers rather than 0, so they're not the best formal charge. Ideally, we'll have as many as close to 0 as possible, and so we should be able to get away with just having two oxygens with a negative 1 charge. That sulfur should be able to have just a, a zero formal charge. And so what we did was we had that oxygen variant that had two bonds on it because it was making a double bond with sulfur. And so sulfur went from having three bonds to having a total of four. The oxygen, coming back to that, I'll, I'll deal with sulfur in a second, but with the oxygen having those two bonds, uh, the reason it had those two bonds was we took one of the lone pairs and made it into a bond. That means we only have two lone pairs left or four lone electrons. So you can see that down here, six minus the sum of two and four, six minus six is zero. And let's come back and take a look at sulfur. We now have six minus the sum of four and two, 
that is also zero. And so that's what we're aiming for. When we scroll down, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the, the last things, the geometry and whether it was polar, nonpolar, or charged. We're going to knock out number six very quickly because it's not reliant on the, the shape for this particular one. This is an ion, and so there is definitely an unequal sharing of electrons, and so we're just going to go ahead and say charged. With the geometry, we're going to go ahead and come back to this and take a look at our shape here. And so we have the central atom with one lone pair and three bonding regions. So three bonding regions and one lone pair makes this trigonal pyramidal. And so I've got those as options. No worry about accidentally typing it wrong. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit submit on my document, and that is it.